On this week's episode of Thursday with Rob and Paul, we are talking to Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the brilliant minds behind the Apple Plus TV show, The After Party, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, The Lego Movie, 21 Jump Street, The Movie, and Clone High. They're talking about the questions they hate to get asked. They're trying to identify a book by its cover and so much more. Plus, we are hearing inventions on Baby Shark Tank. We're reacting to old school commercials and we got new bumpers. Check it all out right now. You know, we, yeah. we were supposed to be in Telluride together. I know. Tell last everybody week. what happened. Yeah, we were both going to go there to do comedy in Telluride, Colorado. And right. the, night, the night before, what happened? Uh, my wife got COVID. Yes. My wife got R.I.P. COVID. R.I.P. 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 <laughs> uh, not, not not funny. Um, no, uh, she got is COVID. She, how she is, is she? Better. She is yeah. better. Um, but there was a lot said about my reaction to her COVID, mm. and uh, and and I'll tell you what my did reaction you did was. you do this show? Uh, did you do this show last Thursday? No, uh, the oh. sleepover took this spot. Uh, and we we were a little bit in a zone. Um, my kids were sick. Yeah, my crazy. dog has just had surgery and my wife Aww. had COVID and she was quarantining in the house. So it was a little bit tricky last week, but I will tell you this. Um, when I tested, tested her, uh, yeah. she was in bed. She wasn't feeling well. I tested her. And then when the thing, Wait, hold, up, hold on, hold on. You tested her while she was asleep. Yeah. I mean, I always give everybody a COVID test at night while they're sleeping. Cause then they can't lie about, Oh, you know, cause some of the people like they, you know, they pay people to stick it up their nose and then they give you the swab. So they get a negative COVID test. You've not heard about that. It's like I a piss know, test I, thing. Yeah. I didn't know people are cheating on COVID. Oh, tests. a lot of people are cheating on COVID tests. Uh, okay. you know, yeah. So, so, so um, you get, you tested her while she was asleep and what happened? Tested her while, no. Uh, so I tested her because she's like, I'm, I'm not feeling well. Can you test me? And I was like, sure. And I tested her. And then on my phone, that thing popped up positive. And I was like, June, you're positive. And then I left the room uh -oh. uh, immediately to go get a mask. And she, June was upset that I just like booked out of the room. But I was like, what else can you do in that moment? I, I was exposed. I needed to like, I'll go I back in there with a mask. On. I think you did the right thing. Right. I, I think you did the right thing. I can see. You got to get out. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's. I like was also if... in the middle of recording a podcast. So there was a couple things at play. <laughs> okay. Wait a second. <laughs> I was like, you have COVID. Did you, did you comfort your wife? Do you think? No, I don't think I did a good job in comforting her because, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I'm going to take that hit and I'm going to be honest with myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. because I was actually, I thought she was going to be fine. I just thought, yeah. you know, she's been vaccinated. She's been boosted. Yeah. She was sick, but it wasn't egregiously sick. Um, yeah. and we'll take care of it. We'll be on top of it. Like I just, you know, and and then I was in this freak out moment of, I'm going to be leaving you in the lurch. I don't know what to do. Like we had this like full on, do I have it? If I go down and she goes down, and, like and, how do we tell, take care of tell the viewers that you, you did not get it. I did not get it. Yeah. I did not get you, COVID. Because you put your mask on. So in a I way. Put my ma I, I took one you, for the team. You did the I right one, thing. Yes. I may not yeah. have comforted my wife in the moment. I think I, I was able to rally and get to comforting her but uh we had to quarantine her up we had to take care of the head the kids take care of the house and uh yeah and it was like so i felt like for those five days of quarantine uh i was you know just doing i was i was running the show as yeah. she would do if i had it now let me ask you this M more importantly yeah. how is sergeant meatball <sighs> it's rough uh, I don't know if I talked about. It. I don't know if I talked about it all. He's doing no. great. He's okay. doing great. Uh, you told Sergeant, me. You yeah. told me privately that he he needed okay. to have surgery. Yeah. So, uh, Sergeant Meatball. By the uh, way, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have thrown this at you. Oh no, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I I will happily chat about all this. Um, Sergeant Meatball uh, tore his ACL. Uh, oh, he was playing, playing uh, pickup basketball oh. and uh, with Air Bud, and it's a Hollywood league. It's fun. It's chill. And uh, he tore his All ACL. All the famous dogs. It was Spuds McKenzie. Uh, and Spuds is, I mean, by the way, if you have not seen him in a while, 
Uh, I know a lot of people think, oh, he's conservative now, but honestly, he's still a fun, fun hang. Spuds a fun, is a fun a hang. Guy. He says uh, some racist. He says some racist shit. But yes, and and yeah. and we. But you know what? You can razz him about it. You can call him out on it, and he's op- he's open to it. He's so I mean that that's yeah. that's the kind of line that you you know we he knows where we stand. We know where he stands. Yeah, uh, yeah. we don't we don't kind of humor him. But uh, yeah. So anyway, Spuds McKenzie, Air Bud, Meatball, they're all playing pickup basketball. Meatball uh, tears his ACL, mm-hmm. and we get caught in this situation where uh, the doctor says to us. Well, you have two options here. Um, option number one is your doggy, dog. Doggy heaven. Do- well, no, they, you know, oh. they, they, it was actually a lot more uh, weirdly dire. They were like, um, option one, uh, your dog lives in pain for the rest of uh, his life. Yeah. Or you get surgery. And so really the, the, the choice seemed clear uh that we were going to get surgery we did get a second opinion as well and uh and they and, and they were they were worried that he might not um it's hard to tell if he's going to do well with anesthesia is that was that the issue um because they, of his age? we had to just make sure we just had to make sure like he's only like 5 years old or 8 years old we don't know but we had to yeah. make sure he was fine he got his surgery he did great but now he is confined to a cage uh, for 2 months He's only so, allowed two 10 minute walks a day. Oh, so, so we he are. Yeah. It. Okay. He re, yeah. Now, so, and now, he's wearing like harnesses and things. Of that can nature. I, can I give you yeah. one tip? Please, please. From one dog lover to another dog lover. Yeah. If you get him on painkillers, Oxycontin mm-hmm. for dogs. Yeah. I, I've been giving him the Oxy, uh, the Oxy patch. He, he, you know, he's going to want it all the time and he'll do oh, anything did. like he'll do anything. Like I, we had a dog who turned to street prostitution Oh would, would no. go out at night when we were oh, all asleep no. and would sell his body to get money to buy more pills. People are talking about this doxy cotton, this doxy yeah. cotton. All <laughs> right. Well, Rob, I, I will tell you this. I know you're bringing this up. Uh, you didn't even know about this. I don't know about it. I did accidentally dose my dog in a terrible way so we were having uh some work done in the kitchen and Mm -hmm. we moved his crate to the kitchen because we felt like that was a centerpiece of the house were you getting rid of the ghosts we we had to get the ghostbusters in here uh and you know it it it, we got we could only afford the young kid version so we had to get all the kids in the house you know so finn wolfhard's in here with the blazers and you know and you know it's great uh so we get uh we get the young ghostbusters in uh, great kids. And, um, we are doing some work in there and he gets a little bit nervous with vacuums and and noise. So I wanted to kind of chill him out. So in the morning I knew that was happening. So I gave him Mm. one of these like CBD edible like biscuits. (laughs) Oh gosh. And then, uh, during the middle of the day, I saw him again, you know, kind of having a little bit of anxiety i popped another one to him Uh, and then later in the day i saw another one (laughs) and i gave him one more time and i read on the back like his weight and and uh, by the way he's also on a lot of like other pills that make him glassy eyed and yeah and uh you know not feeling pain so i gave him three of these uh these edibles and i go to take him out that night and he he couldn't move and yeah. June and I freaked the fuck out. We're like, wait, what is going on? Like, he can't move. Like, he was just like, like, and, we, <laughs> and he yeah. couldn't pick up his legs. And he was just dragging himself. We're like, oh, no. Like, what, did he re-injure something? We didn't know. And we're like, we're trying to figure out everything. I'm like, what did I do? And 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 this is bad. We got to bring him to the emergency room. And we got to do all this sort of stuff. And our vet yeah. said, do this. <laughs> just make a motion at his face and if the dog freaks out he's probably high and uh and i did that and he went like he had a total freak out i was like okay my dog is high and then after being high for about 15 minutes we he ate some food he drank some water and then he popped up and was totally out of it and back to normal and it but yeah. for that 15 minutes of him just being so stoned it was and we didn't know what it was and i just put it together at the last second like oh right i gave him three of these edibles uh so yeah that was a real uh a real mistake 
crazy. He just wanted to watch Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> He's like super high. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm glad that everybody is on the mend. It sounds like in your house. Everyone's on the mend. June took yeah. our mask off today. She was five days quarantined, five days in mask. How did that go for her? And I don't want to uh, get too much into your family, your private mm -hmm. stuff, but I can't see June. Um, how do I put this delicately? It seems like that would, uh, um, she would not love being quarantined. <laughs> um, she watched a lot of TV. Mm. I think it was very difficult for her to hear like me and the kids having fun, doing cool stuff, bopping yeah. around. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that she felt very neglected uh, simply because there was not much you could do. So, yeah. you know, um, but I do think if you deal with any family member that has COVID, I will tell you the thing that I think that I did well was um, I someone in the chat said, did you crate trainer? I did keep her in the crate the entire time. She was great. Yeah. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I got uh, a big cooler and I filled it full of ice uh, every day and I would put all fun stuff in it. So she had like a little mini fridge in her room at any given point. I also gave her a garbage bag for her room. So like, you know, cause sometimes like you're ordering in food, you're yeah. throwing, like you want to like kind of clean up a little bit. You want to like get out of the space. So I feel like I tried to as much as I could without going in there. And I also made the mistake of when I, when I left the room, I just grabbed whatever I could before I, you know, was going to quarantine for five days. So I had yeah. a real weird assortment of clothes for the last five days. I finally got back yeah. in my room about two days ago. So. I wouldn't, <clears throat> I don't know that I would brag about giving her a garbage bag. I mean, just in, 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 the, just, in the retelling of it, when you well, tell other people, yeah, you know, tell, I, telling us it's fine. We're, no one here okay. is going to judge you. It's just me. And six hundred thousand. But people don't. But don't you know? Like, don't you have those feelings? Like, some. Like, she couldn't like get up to do any. Like, she she could get yeah, out of the bed, yeah, but like she was yeah. trapped in that room and she wanted it. And do you know what she said to me? She said to me, "Hey, I gave her forks and knives. I gave her anytime mail came, I would shoot it under the door. I was trying to make it feel like she was in." <laughs> Some sort of, uh, you know, got the paper up there, made sure yeah. she got coffee from the coffee, you know. But I, but what I did was, um, she said to me at one point, Hey, can you give me like a garbage bag up here or something? And I was like, I already did it, honey. Already in the bag, in the supply bag I gave you because you, you're, you're snotting and all those uh, tissues. Yeah. You, you want to yeah. clean up yeah. your space. Yeah. You're gross. You're right. gross when you're sick, you know? Right. Um, now, let me so ask anyway, you this. Yeah. <clears throat> let me ask you this. Are you oh, guys... we're at 7 billion views right now? 7 billion. Yeah, and tell me when we need to jump to the uh, to the Shark Tank in a second. Um, we yeah, we should probably okay. jump in there. Oh, did we even explain? Let's back up for just a second. Yeah. Who? Some people may not know Lord Miller. Oh, Lord Miller. I, I mean, it would be crazy if you don't. They are the they are the masterminds behind uh, a little MTV show called Clone High, which then brought them into uh, a bigger world where they were making movies like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Meatballs. Uh, they made the Lego movie. They won an Academy Award uh, for the Lego movie. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Uh, they, Into the Spider-Verse, uh, which some might argue is the best Spider-Man movie. The 21 Jump Street films. They made 20, two of those. Two yeah. Jump Street. Let's introduce uh, the, the person who filled in for us last week. She is the producer of this show. She has her own show called Sleepover. Yeah. You know her. You love her. Uh, Molly Reynolds. Molly, you don't have to show your face if you don't want to, but you can at least show your voice. Uh, there it is. Hey, Molly. Nice. Welcome. Uh, All right. What do we got? Lightning. We have we have a lot on tap tonight. We have yeah. a lot on tap, but we especially are excited for Shark Tank, Baby Shark Tank. What do you got? Who do you want to set up first? Well, first uh, of all, we should explain what it is. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Molly. You explain it. Oh, okay. You're yeah, good. Baby Shark Tank. It's Shark Tank, but it's for us. It's, it's Shark Tank for people without the wherewithal or um, financial... And who don't uh, want to deal with the bullshit of Mr. Wonderful and, Ka you know, all those jerks. But, but even more, it's like, hey, look, I have a great idea. I'm never going to actually actualize this, but I need to say it out loud. So I feel like I'm doing at least the bare minimum. And that and I look, there's so many of us. My mom created an amazing invention where she uh, took uh, a cord, like a bungee cord, and attached it to her Apple TV remote and then attached the one side of the, uh, the other side of the cord to the bed so she never loses her Apple TV remote. And I was like, Mom, you could sell that at uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Just dress it up a little bit. 
that would be a, a, a great hit. Uh, you know, people don't want to lose the remote control. How many times do you lose the remote control? So, but she's not going to go there. She's not going to no. get financing. She's not going <laughs> to do that. Um, so anyway, uh, people are coming up with great names for it. Tethered. It is an idea. It's, it's an ingenious idea. But anyway, my mom's not going to do anything with it. So why not celebrate the people who can't, but the people who do think? Great uh, ideas. That's yeah, that great, great ideas may or may not be going anywhere. And Rob and I do have a giant income and we will steal these ideas. So that's part yeah. of it too. Part yeah. of it is for, yeah, just us to steal their intellectual property. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, yeah, who do we got? Yeah, let's uh, start with Buttonhead. I'm going to remove myself and then bring in Buttonhead. Okay. Hey. Hey. hey what's up, man? What's How up, guys? Good. Buttonhead, good. great setup. I love that normally when we bring people on to the show, we never know what we're going to get. You got a mic, you got a backdrop, you got a camera, and look, you're rocking part of the hat club. Are you a bald man? No, I am not. Okay. It, you know what? It, like I was going to say, if you are, you're covering it well and it looks great, uh, but you're not. So, all right. So, uh, shout out to the Discord fam, real quick. Yes. Always shout out to the Discord fam. We have a great Discord. If you're not in the Discord, get in the Discord. What is the Discord? Just a place to hang out, chat, be uh, friendly with people, have good conversations. And, and Buttonhead, don't you own a company, like some sort of clothing company or something? I do. Uh, yeah. Buttonheadclothing.com. Very all right. So, you, you are somebody. You are He's an someone entrepreneur. who yeah. is He's... an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. Are you wearing anything that is buttonhead related right now? I have a shirt on. All right. Oh, oh that's a that? button. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Right. And then I have, uh, I, I make like backpacks. Whoa. Oh, look at this. Cool. All right. I love it. Are these, then... the? is it? Is this what you're pitching us on Shark Tank? Or should... No, should... but if you okay. want to invest, go ahead. This is a cool one. <laughs> I love this. Well, let me let me that ask you this because cool. you actually are a yeah. real businessman. Uh, how did you go about getting financing or doing your thing or have you or where are you at? Yeah. So what happened was I always wanted to make a clothing company. And about six months before COVID, I realized that it was kind of possible. There was, okay. uh, you know, there's services like Printful uh, that are direct to garment and that you could connect through like a Wix website and stuff like that. Right. So you don't have to have like on hand inventory. And so Perfect. I've always wanted to have my own uh, clothing company and I was in our uh, clothing brand and I was in marketing. So I thought of like a very marketable design, something that was easy to make, easy to recognize, uh, put that together. And then um, I actually started learning Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign um, at work. And then after work, I would go home and start putting together designs. And then I got laid off at the beginning of COVID and then, um, which gave me a, you know, unemployment, the amount that they were giving was great. So I actually had some money to invest into Buttonhead. And then um, I, you know, I worked on it all through COVID and stuff. And that's kind of what I did uh, during that time to keep myself busy. And then um, I officially launched it September 1st of 2021. And, and now at this point, has it been successful? What has it been like? No, actually. Well, if I shouldn't say no, I actually have had to take a break for from it because okay. I had to get back to work. Um, okay, got it. Because I, what's you know, your, I ran out of what's money. Your, what's your day job? Uh, actually, Buttonhead got me my day job. I was like I said, I was out of work for almost two years, and I just started. Um, I like I, said, I was in marketing, but now I'm in e commerce. I'm running an online uh, video game store. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, I for a video this. game publisher. Okay, cool. So yeah. you got you, you're you're doing your stuff. But now, Buttonhead, I'm looking at buttonheadclothing.com. It's existing. You can buy your stuff there. Just no new designs right now as you are working at your – you're working on your job. Yeah, I mean, like, there are new designs and there are stuff that I have. But, like, I, you know, I just launched recently. So everything here is new. You okay, know, got basically. it. Basically. So, like, I mean, it was launched September 1st of last year. So these are the designs it. that I'm that I'm coming out with. I will I say that it. the backpacks are really good commuter backpacks. Not so right. much – for uh, kids, but they do have one really cool feature that I do like right. to show people. I want to see it. Show it. They have a back pocket, like a security pocket. Ooh. So like I put like my wallet, my keys. Uh, you I know, like that. Cigarettes, whatever good... you want. I don't smoke, but whatever you want that you don't want people to steal or yeah. stuff like that. I like it's it. Really and conservative, pocket. conservatively <laughs> priced, fifty-four bucks. That's a that's a good deal for a backpack. And so you got racks. Head, yeah, go ahead. But then what uh what would you like to pitch uh yes. the baby the baby sharks to that? Okay, yeah, and you guys call me Sean. My name is Sean. I don't. All know right, you. Sean. Uh, That's okay, Buttonhead. We'll go with Buttonhead. 
Hey, Buttonhead. Butthead's cool. Well, Buttonhead's the company. I'm not Buttonhead, right? It's okay, like, right, not, I'm not trying okay. to like- brand You're not myself. the, yeah, okay, okay I got Buttonhead. it. Okay, yeah. Buttonhead. <laughs> uh, so, you know the murder mystery parties uh, yeah. that yes. you have at your house? How about a reality TV show version? You can invite over seven, or 30 sexy singles that will make out with you. You can invite over people that will get drunk and break your stuff. And wait, wait. Fight so them. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm, uh, baby Buttonhead, I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> Are you just p- pitching this as a TV show or something that you could do? Like you could From the hire. comfort of your home. All right. So I, as a just normal person, could hire 30 people to show up. They would run a murder mystery for me, but they would be sexy singles. Well, it wouldn't be a murder mystery. It'd be like The Bachelor. And then you can make out with them. You could take them on dates. You'd be able to live the reality show. There's a, at there's your a house. lot. There's a lot of emphasis on making out with these actors that are coming to your house well, I so mean, far. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could actually have like a simulated desert and be stranded out there and drink your own pee. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> First of all, let me let's just back it up and go. I think the germ of the idea that I like. Off the, off the, off the, just an, right out an of the An immersive, gate. an immersive entertainment at home experience. I, I'm, I'm a little bit, I don't know if we're out of the COVID woods far enough yet where people, most people would feel comfortable inviting 30 sexy singles into their house. I, maybe. I mean, I by the way, there are uh, sex workers that would uh, probably perform that service. It just would be expensive. Uh, but, well, but, you know. But, what Buttonhead, yeah. I think, is, is pitching is, is actors to come over and and act out a murder mystery right but then you you have to kiss them but i I think the kissing would be extra but it's not but you're not acting out the murder mystery you're acting out the bachelor and you're acting out survivor and you're acting out oh wait a second okay now i see what you're saying okay i got confused so what you are pitching and i actually now think this is an interesting idea you could pick the reality show that you want and then go and do that now i've always had the idea that I love the idea of Survivor. I would never submit to doing it on TV, but I would love to do those challenges. Like if I could go to a place for a day and do a Survivor for a day or a weekend, that might be good. So, but you're you're pitching that instead of a murder mystery company, we are a Survivor company or we're a Bachelor company. A reality, a pick a your reality. own reality TV show. Mm-hmm. I see. Bingo. I see. All right, now so, I would say the Bachelor one is probably the one that would be the most problematic. But probably the most popular. <laughs> well, the, the, I mean... one, one small thing to try to get around is how you, because you, legally I don't know that you could say the names of those shows, but again, this these are just legal things. If we get a good lawyer. They have Star Wars camps where you learn how to like okay, fight with okay. a lightsaber. Okay, so okay. you could do like, you know, surviving survivor, you know, you don't have to use the uh, logo or something like that. I, yeah. I, I think that coming to the house makes it uh, problematic because you are, you are like then, you're, that's a lot. Like that's a lot of p- cars. You're coming to your house. You got thirty cars. You got people setting well, up in so, your backyard. So maybe yeah. what if it was just like a retail location? You know, like a like an escape room or something. But but Boom. you go there, and we have like a few different pre built sets, and we have you know, as Mr. Buttonhead said, you know, thirty sexy singles and or or you know, for payroll reasons maybe fifteen, and then you know they just go from. You know, we what, now whatever how, we're scheduled to do, you know, that's the show we're going to Well, do. here's what I will uh, – this is what I'll pitch on top of that. If you want to go the singles route, if you want to create the bachelor route, what you do is you say, hey, single people, Friday night, 8 p.m., come to this location. We're going to split you up, uh, and we're going to create – our own version of like, so everyone would be there because they are looking for love because oh, what you're we, creating, we host it. Yeah. We have a, we have a good host to run yes. it. And, yeah. 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 Exactly. Like we do one room that's for women, mm-hmm. one room that's for oh, that, men. Yeah, That might be better than, yeah, because then we're not in the prostitution business. Right. No, we're no in the, no yeah. disrespect to prostitution. The seven minutes in heaven business. Yeah. Well, and, well, we're I, in, I still we're, am. We're, uh, in the, we're in the hosting, yeah. we're in the hosting business and it's up to you to get your friends to come to the thing. I'm a little, I'm, I'm all right. So this is an interesting idea. Now, now, Mr. Uh, Buttonhead, yeah. may, I, may I ask, and you don't have to answer this, uh, in your mind, 
in a perfect world, if you were to go to one of these events and make out with all of these people, how many people would you want to make out with at, at, in, in one evening? Eight. Eight. Okay, write that down, Paul. Eight. All right. That seems... I... <sighs> all right. I mean, it sounds like it a down. pretty standard night. All right, standard, Buttonhead. Standard, but, uh, all right, Buttonhead. Uh, you know what? I, 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 we appreciate the pitch. There's a lot here. This is, you know, I like the idea that you're doing immersive reality show role play. The idea that I was most excited about, honestly, uh, but then somebody pointed out it's Murderville, which is like just uh, put a bunch of uh, reality contestants in a house and have them solve a murder mystery that might be fun but obviously rob's show murderville does that so it's well. not my show it's just a it, it is a show but but that but that would be a good interactive you know immersive thing too you could also do this there's a version of this which you could do for families where you know you bring your wife and your kids and you guys go and you do survivor at this place or you do i like that idea know. that 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 idea mm -hmm. feels sound doing yeah. survivor Doing America, like, uh, what's that game called? The uh, America's Race or America's Favorite Race? What is that? You know, you know that, the, that the show? Amazing Race. Amazing, Amazing race. race. Amazing Race. Yeah, you do challenges like that. Yeah. Or Floor is Lava, you know, stuff like Floor that. Floor is Lava. If, if, if even the people who built Floor is Lava, I imagine there's a lot of legal ramifications. Uh, my sister-in-law had a birthday party at a roller skating rink this weekend, and she watched somebody eat it on the floor in the middle of the roller skating rink. And they come out to the person in the roller skating rink and they make them sign a waiver before oh. they can put them in a wheelchair to say, like, Ooh. we can move you because wow. they don't want to be sued. So there would be a lot of things to sign away. But if you're jumping out of airplanes, I'm sure that floor is lava is, is fine as well. Yeah. Well, these are whiplash. 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 Yeah. I mean, look, double dare would be great. You you have a host, you bring in two families, Jeopardy. Yep. I, holy, I like this holy idea. Moly, holy this holy moly. This is why I come to you guys. This is why I come to you guys. It's a good All idea, right. Buttonhead. All right. Okay. Buttonhead. Okay, buttonhead. Uh, good good luck right. with uh, – what's the name Goodbye of the company before again? Before I get dropped. Buttonhead, buttonhead clothing. clothing. Buttonheadclothing.com. Okay. All right. So that was our baby shark tank. First baby shark tank. Can I just right. see yeah. – um, can I see my opening one more time? Yeah, I'm sure just trying to... Well, mine was this one. Oh, shit. That's uh, right. The first you came to see. Oh, shit. That was mine. Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. Oh, man. I mean... Yeah. All right. I'm still thinking about it. I'm just... I'm kind of... All right. Uh, I won't say this much. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, a lot of people are saying we they would not invest in that... Thing. I think that you could actually do it in a really cool way. You rent out a warehouse. You have like a Jeopardy stage. You got like a floor. It's definitely, it's definitely doable. You could definitely ha set up like some game shows and like a Survivor thing. And I think like yeah. the, you know, um, it's definitely doable. I, I think that Buttonhead, no disrespect, might be in it for the chicks. Uh, yeah, he's or, like or, he was, or he was, know, whoever. But yeah, but, uh, yeah, that seems a little complicated. But if you I think there's a way to do it. Um, yes. Now, uh, Molly, they, you, yes. You, I mean, like we, yeah, I mean, there's, we have, we, we got <clears> what <throat> we need to know so far. Not, not, I don't know if I'm investing yet because no. it seems like a lot of logical. I'm uh, out for, yeah. for all the reasons that we've discussed and many more. I'm out. All right. Now, mm. Molly, I will ask you this. People can don't I, know this. Yeah. Can I point something out here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone had a good idea in the chat. Um, just do sitcoms. Why not? What if we rebuilt some famous sitcom sets in and warehouse? give people the script? This is just give, a pop up. Yeah. And by the yeah, way, it's just a pop up. Yeah. I will show you next week or the next time that we are back together. I will show you when I did that on the bridge of the Star Trek uh, of mm. the the USS Enterprise with my dad. I have that footage. I will bring it in next week. To and that show seems you. like you might get a lawsuit but but maybe no, not for like a oh, year well, maybe, maybe but you by, could make a shitload of money and then, but why doesn't universal just have a room where you just do all their game shows that they own you know yeah. everything's under one roof i mean yeah again again so much stuff uh but molly who is next yes let's, okay i have three more baby sharks uh let's right, let's head on over to um the asp or you can call him aaron as well all right aaron welcome aaron <laughs> Another great setup. You look great. I love the lights. Thank you. I love the jack-o'-lantern. Is the jack-o'-lantern up? 
twenty four seven? Is there like three sixty five? It it is now. It's new. It's one of our first pieces of artwork in a, a new place that we've been in for uh, about a year now. But it's a it's a wonderful buttkin that one oh. of our friends made, where uh, you paint your backside and then stamp it onto the canvas and then oh, make more with it. Oh wow. So that's someone's butt. That. Is that is that yeah, your your butt? Your, your significant other's ass? It's not. It's not. It's someone else's significant other that she requested it from. Very okay. nice. Okay. Them. I got you. I and, like and, that. and tell me your name again and where do you live? Aaron and I'm in Georgia in the okay. US. Okay. Welcome uh Aaron to Baby Shark Tank. So Aaron, um, um, let me let me just yeah. Paul. Can I while we have Aaron and Aaron, I want to be uh, respectful of your time. But did you see the opening graphic for me that Paul built about me not shitting my pants? And I did. I commented on it. Oh, uh, what'd you think? Of, like, what was your take? To me, I'm a little, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm not so sure about it. But you know, I I know that that carries some weight. But I think that the people need to know that that you're clean, that your yeah. your hygiene is Thank on me. point. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because look, I I would be imagine if we had a video that was like Rob Ubel shits his pants. It would be so embarrassing. So I want yeah, to make sure that no, I get that would out be in terrible. Front of it. Yeah, but <laughs> and again, I don't want to use up your time here, Aaron. We can figure this out offline. Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. Sorry, people what, need I, to know. I, yeah, I know, but it, but guys, it just seems like by by saying that I don't, it makes people think that there's a chance that I might. We got to get in front of this, Rob. What if Kanye starts coming after you for something, you know, and he okay. starts saying, yeah, Rob, people shits his pants. And we will have we will have plenty of proof that you don't. Rob Hubel. Def All right. So, Aaron, uh, tell us your idea for a business and we will uh, we'll we'll tell you if we're if we're in or not. OK, my idea is, uh, so you know about the the elongated arms, you know, the reachers, the grabbers. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, for example, if you're in a store or you have uh, a, a high shelf in your house, you kind of use this little grabber and you can go get a can or something like that from a high high place. Exactly. And and I think they, they do themselves a disservice by making it kind of uh, geared only in, towards people that are older and who are shorter. Mm -hmm. I want to make it for everyone. And they've come okay. up with some new technology over the years. They've included magnets and like an adjustable elbow. But why stop there? So what I was thinking is what's something that everyone has in their house or covets if they don't? A Swiss Army knife. I want a Love Swiss it. Army reacher. Let's okay. include everything, you know, those shitty little scissors that don't cut, a comb, a screwdriver, a flashlight, any a, a veritable inspector gadget of a reacher. That's what I want. Okay, hold on. Okay. Because I, 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 uh, and I, I, I like your enthusiasm. I like your presentation. I have a question right out of the gate, and I don't mean to just jump in and cut you off. When you say you want, like, scissors on it, do you, are, are you saying that you want, the reacher to have uh swiss army like features or you want scissors that can reach a, a longer distance you know all of it i think we have the technology and it. and something even like uh you think about now uh mm -hmm. with, with the pandemic something you have to think of uh, you want to stay six feet away and maybe uh your derelict uncle is unable to trim his own mustache you, that's something you can do from six feet away now Got it. Okay. okay. I mean, Rob, what do you think? Um, I think it's, um, I'm trying to think of some applications in my own life, like, uh, on, uh, on my ceiling in my house, the, uh, speaker cover, um, fell, fell off, just got loose and fell off. And so I've been trying to figure out a way to, to put the speaker cover back up on my living room speaker up on the ceiling. Cause I don't have like a really big interior ladder. So, you know, I would need a grabber and like a, a long screwdriver. So like a screwdriver, you know, that could maybe work, you know. So I, I think there's something to this. Um, and maybe. that's part of where we get people to. Uh, you get the, you follow something like a Nintendo model or something. You buy the initial product. And then yeah. we have the additional add-on items that we have. So you've got the grabber and then you've got the additional extension arm. It so, comes up, you're okay. holding and screwing at the same time. I so see. it would be in the shape of 
uh, a hand with a screwdriver in it, or or maybe there's two grabbers, one to hold, one to screw. I, I think where I think where you're going to actually more to sell benefit here is by adding some sort of a view screen, like a drone view screen that is attached to the front of the grabber, because we are not we are getting far away, especially if we're going up. Uh, that we so can't the, see. So it's a telescoping hands. I'm just, mm, you know, this I is, like this, Rob. Show ya. And it's going up. And then, so you're saying, Paul, there's a little, a little lens right here. Just so we know how the screwdriver needs to hit. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Okay. You know, I didn't come unprepared too. I did have a marketing idea. Whoa. Hot show on Amazon right now. Reacher. We co opt it. You've got the multifaceted tool backed by the multifaceted man reach for your goals just like jack reacher hmm wow all right yeah i mean yeah the marketing tie in is it's a rough. bit of a stretch but you know but maybe if it if it was a product it's not that rough was because it's bad it's just like we were you're relying on a lot of uh what? components that come together the, unfortunately the producers of reacher are probably not I don't know if it's Amazon or not. It could be like some other entity well, that. You but know, maybe you get Lee Brothers. Child. You get on the you you get you cut Lee Child in, and then he writes in one of his next Jack Reacher novels about Jack Reacher having trouble grabbing something, and then all of a sudden for season two of Reacher, it's a more organic oh, product placement. Um, what do people think in the chat? Do we like this idea? Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. Well, someone said in the chat that definitely if we do that that you would have to incorporate the sex whip hmm. and uh, you we know, can do that you could i mean you, you know you could have the whip on there i mean really if if we wanted to combine this idea with uh buttonhead's idea we could have uh 30 sexy singles and they're all oh. they've all got you know these long arms and we turn out the lights and people could just kind of do whatever they want with their research. I, I, now you've lost me. I will say that uh, what you're what you basically are are <laughs> pitching to us is a long stick with yeah. different things on the end of it. Yes. Yes. Um, Look I, how well the selfie stick did. That had I, one use. I, I right. agree. That's I right. like that this could be a selfie stick as well. What I wouldn't lead with, Aaron, but it doesn't make a difference because we're not, you know, we're not making this right now, is I wouldn't lead with the scissors. Because very rarely are you six are feet you away snipping, from something that you need to snipping, snip. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would, as I, someone I with a beard, think, as you have a beard, I think you'd be nervous. I think, uh, right. yeah, I think you would use a flashlight from a, from maybe a distance. Mm -hmm. I think you would use, um, um, what else would you use from a long distance? I, I um, like a flashlight. I like definitely, a, definitely um, the grabbing thing, the screwing. I think the screwdriver thing. I think. I also think the camera thing is an interesting idea too, because maybe like sometimes you hear something and you you don't know where it is, or it's up in an event and you want to take a look, or you know, or, or maybe what there's about, a there. Could a, part a, of this, Aaron, thing. could part of it be like a um, a a camera? But um, what, what was that video game? Um, Sonic where they. Hedgehog? No, it was the it was like the one where you would sneak around Splinter Cell. Oh, Splinter Cell! Oh, wow, yeah. Splinter right. Cell, but they had like a camera that you would like go. You would stick around the camera corners. around the corner. You know, like mm -hmm. that. Like, mm -hmm. how, how come no one's ever? Wait built a second. It? What? What is that? This is just my thinking putty. It looked, I, well, well right now, now it looks. The, yeah, it looked real. I, I've seen the thinking putty, but the way that you presented it there <laughs> was and yeah, that's wait, disturbing. Oh, <laughs> no, it's a no, good we, addition to the stick. Wait, no. Wait. Paul, I'm not. I am not a baby shark tank. I'm not in on. I'm, <laughs> I'm just. I'm. I'm always. I've always got the my way party. it came out. The way it came out was <laughs> really shocking to me. I'm trying uh, to explain a telescoping, <laughs> a a camera attachment. Yes. that looks around like corners, <laughs> slowly drooping. A slowly. Well, a flash. You're pitching a, a flaccid. flaccid what about that? What if we pitch a camera that's a flaccid camera? I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, but, people but are there's pitching something a here. lint I roller. There, I think there's something here. So far, this is a leading idea. But Molly, what do we got next? Uh, we'll come back to you if we like right, it. Aaron, right. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, great. Um, I was this close to pulling you out, Rob. Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Molly, let me ask you a question. Uh, yeah. I've noticed because you and I talk a bunch, but the uh, yeah. but that you've replaced... 
or you've now adopted this image of a fighter and you're, oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. What is this? What is the I relevance here? Well, well I, I, re I realized I didn't have any makeup on and not that I'm that vain, but I just, uh, before my avatar was a picture of Paul Shear, and I just felt oh, like right. it might get a little confusing. I appreciate that. And, uh, because, you know, especially because right now, uh, oh, you don't have to, you don't, I'm not, no, I'm not peer pressuring you. Fine. Um, I, you know, I was going to, I was going to tell you, Rob, but we have a new feature on the show. Are you ready for the new feature? Yeah. New feature is breaking news. What? What's up, everybody? I'm here with breaking news. Wow. Wow. Two cameras. What uh, What was the news? I don't know. I have to figure out the news. I don't know. But I'm I'm going to work on the feedback. Was there feedback coming through? I could hear it on my end, little, but I didn't. A little bit. A little All bit. Right. Not too bad. But basically, if there is a big story, like if the world broke out in like World War Three, mm -hmm. you would cover it. I would be here to tell you like, hey, look, this is the show. But this. That's news. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's great. All right. So Molly, who's next? Yeah. Uh, let's bring in James. James, welcome to Baby Shark Tank. Right, so James, uh, we are investors. Uh, you are in the Overlook Hotel. Uh, I hope there's no one in that tub. But uh, what is? Uh, oh, it looks like there's a little bit of somebody in that tub. Uh, what is your idea? Uh, well, am, am I coming through? Okay, you're coming um, through yeah. perfectly. Awesome. One of the things that has happened in the in the recent years is a lot of movie theaters have closed down. One of the yeah. things that has also happened is that a lot of uh, states have legalized marijuana. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I'm proposing is we combine the two. We take those big, big ass lobbies from the, uh, the movie theaters and turn it into a weed shop that is uh, 80s, 90s VHS rental themed. And then we take mm -hmm. those movie theaters, mm -hmm. trim them down to like, say, 20 seat theaters, and you can rent them out for your friends so that you and your friends can sit in a movie and watch, you know, do a Friday the 13th marathon and, and smoke along with the movies. Or wow. do something fun and call this greenhouse cinemas, you know, draft on the, the draft house. Okay. Pretty, yeah, pretty, go ahead. I like the idea of micro movie theaters. I think that there is something there. A friend of ours recently rented out a theater to show Jackass. Yes. And I couldn't go. Did you go, Paul? I couldn't go. I did not go. <clears throat> but, um, but but renting out or or doing little small little theaters is I th I think a great idea. Um, I don't know how complicated it would be. I can't remember where weed is legal. Is is weed weed is it's only not legal all in... over the place, but it, it but it's growing. I, yeah, yes. I feel like it's a matter of time before it's going to be yeah, better. I but agree. here's so what I just... here's what I like about what you're pitching here is in Amsterdam they have these. Uh, cafes, right? And they are yeah. cannabis cafes. You can uh, you can buy your cannabis and you can get a cup of coffee and you can smoke. And it's sort of like that's – it is a, a lounge, a smoking lounge, if you will. And what you're kind of pitching here is like a theater environment where it is okay to smoke. It's like you are uh, – it's kind of like it is smoking indoors, which probably is the bigger issue of this. But maybe if you all agree – that that's what you're getting into. Well, you can also smoke outside or whatever. But like, so so I, I forgot your name. Tell me your name again. James. James, are you are you uh, selling the weed or are uh, is that a separate? Uh... Well, much like how at, at an Alamo Draft House, you can go buy the beer and yeah. like sometimes okay. they also brew the beer there and it's yeah. the house right. special. Yeah. Like yeah. you just have a a weed yeah. shop Dispensary. where you can yeah, yeah, yeah get yeah. what you want. And are you also are you pitching that there are um, a lot of different movies that you choose from? Like there's a catalog of movies that, yeah, that people go through and they they thumb through and they say, hey, guys, you know, here's your your group of 12 friends or whatever. What are we going to watch? Let's watch this movie, you know? Yeah. So, OK, um, I got it. I, I, have, I have an idea, I like Rob. That, actually. I have yeah. an idea. Here's the issue. There are such stringent regulations on cannabis uh you have to be certain distances from schools and churches and uh certain uh special areas right so movie theaters are often in uh more public spaces so that is a a tricky buy-in but 
again, going to the non-smoking thing, what if you bought a drive-in and drive-ins are often far away from churches and schools and things like that. And it's the same idea, which is you drive in, you can get high in your car. The thing is a little bit more programmed. So your friends don't pick it, but it is all fun revivals. It's all fun movies to watch while high or whatever you have theme nights you have whatever and you you. sell you you. sell weed but you you sell weed at the concession stand and the weed is themed for the movie so you can get your twizzlers you can also get your you know you You can get your can of butter on your on your popcorn you can yes you mm. can make you could do it every it could be yes and that way if say you are you don't like the smell of smoke but you want an edible you want that experience you're in your car and you have that kind of connection and everyone's, you know, you have this kind of like, there's a, a place out here in LA called Mission Tiki. It's like a, a, a Hawaiian themed drive-in. And it's, you know, besides the theme, there's not much more Hawaiian about it, but this would be like a full, I like this green thumb or a greenhouse uh, cinema. That's kind okay. of a fun now idea. Here, here's, I'm just trying to be the lawyer of us. Yeah, uh, James, I, I, you, uh, yeah. You I know James? we're going to go. No, no. Well, just the driving part is tricky. I do like the, I like the drive-in aspect of it, but if mm. everyone's getting fucked up and then they're driving, someone in the chat said, what if there was like, <clears throat> so what if it was like a party bus, Paul? Like, remember that glass party okay, bus? We yes, did crash test? Yes. Okay, yes, yes. So what if it's like, okay, you guys park wherever you want to park, smoke whatever you want to smoke, and then we'll pick you up in this big bus, drive you to this place, and then all of the audio is pumped into the bus where we, I mean, I don't know, different business, but this is by, this is the, the double standard that liquor and weed has because I've been to drive in movies where they serve beer. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, this is, this is, uh, well, James is the, the, I feel like the the core of your idea is let's use these abandoned Abandoned spaces. spaces. Yeah. Yeah, Which I like, I I like, I like that too. I like this idea of a greenhouse Mm -hmm. cinema, I like the I think where you're going to get complicated and where it's going to lose money is that you get to pick. I think that if a programming thing might be better, but you're saying that you only want to do small like well, friend it, gatherings. It's yeah, it's kind of like having uh, the karaoke the private room. karaoke. Uh, like, okay, all right, you can Ooh, go to, okay. but all it's right. like it's a movie yeah. theater, and you can kind of carve up the space you had where it was a 400 seat, seat theater and still yeah. have that big open space. So. It's kind so of like being an open couches. environment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Couches like, and stuff like of, that. Yeah. Maybe have some more food. All right. I like this idea. Yeah. I like this what idea. If, what if idea. we just went around and aggressively bought out karaoke places and said, fuck you. There we're ta- you go, we're taking, Rob. We're taking there over. There you go. Now this is going to be a little mini room that we're going to, you know, and then you can do the programming of the movies and then people don't have to watch the whole movie. You could say, okay, we're going to watch the opening of Jaws and then this. and then Oh, that. I love that short yeah. form movie theater. Let's yeah. watch the and, one great scene from that movie. Yeah, Let's watch yeah, this yeah. one thing. And at any point, everyone on their iPhone, it's all connected up to an app or I change it. Like if you oh, get an shit. eye, boom, yeah, 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 boom. Yeah, that's great. Anyway um that's a great idea people in the chat james say someone's gonna steal this idea oh yeah uh, i just want to be able to go to one that'd be awesome like (laughs) it'd be really cool what do you you, where do you live and what do you do uh i I live up in wyoming uh so it's not in a place where it is legal but uh i I do a couple things uh i right now i have a side hustle i'm a i get paid to take COVID tests for people no, like it's, oh, shut it's the a, fuck up. Wait, it, that's what I was option. saying. I'm, wait, no, I, I'm so happy you mentioned up. it. It gets it gets it shut out here. The it gets fuck the exposure up. for me. It's it's a, he's fucking with us. You're no, definitely fucking. No, no, not. no. I used to uh, like back in high school. I used to uh, do piss tests because I wasn't yeah. like a. I didn't do <laughs> any yeah. drugs or anything. And then into college, I used to do it. And it, like now, I just get paid to fuck take COVID yeah. tests. Yeah, COVID test, dude. What? It's, yes, it's yes, nuts. Yes, yes. Wait, so James, can yeah. I drill down on this? Who, um, who needs that? Like, are are people that have to fly that have COVID, or people that have to go to work that? Yeah, people who want to fly and like you know, if you have to present a, a recent COVID test and proof that it was is negative. Like yeah. here, here it is. Bam! Here's the proof, and it's yeah. it's my nose that it goes up. I mean, I know I'm clean. I stay inside all day. I don't go out anywhere. Amazing. It's you basically provide uh, a service for people Amazing. who don't want to be bothered taking the test or don't want to have uh, potentially a positive test. Uh, well, they know, yeah, the yeah they, he knows that he's clean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. you know, we're and not, not a, you know, I'm constantly so testing, so but you, I'm, so I know so I'm blown away by it. 
So James, you are the reason that the COVID numbers in Wyoming are so high. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Wow. I'm not very good at taking tests. I never By was. By the way, people are wow. saying in the chat that like people are paying homeless people to take them in. Uh, that's Miss Lizzie. Uh, like, so there is this weird thing. I mean, there is something very bizarre about it because to me, what I appreciate, what I get with the weed testing is, I smoke weed. I like I can't detox from it. I need clean piss. COVID, it's like, well, I'm sick. Like it's like it's not like it, it like it is a but I guess it's like they're using you to basically make sure that nothing gets Yeah. It's, it's, I yeah, mean, amazing. people are saying it might be a crime, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're not no, endorsing it. We're I, not endorsing it. We're just simply celebrating that my dumb idea is actually an idea that somebody actually has. <laughs> It's 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 really crazy, and I am. How do, how do people find? That, how like, do people? It, just, find it came you? up naturally, and like I'm. How do people oh. find? How do people find you? Like, how do you market that? Uh, I've I've got a couple ads up on. Um, well, it was up on Backpage, but that is down now. Uh, Facebook, you know, crazy. Instagram, what stuff like that. I, I do have a, a slight presence, but it's. Yeah. I try to remain low key. Man, the apocalypse. Right. The yes. apocalypse. People are people are upset in the chat that we are spreading. We we're, we're we are not endorsing. Uh, we think it's a joke. People, we, we're not gonna. We're we're gonna. We're, all right, people I, are like, get do not support. People are upset. Okay, just but before you guys kick me off, I wanted to I wanted to throw some support to Rob on his opening because mm. Paul. Uh, I mean, you literally start out by saying, oh, shit. I think you shit your pants right before hitting record, and you're really trying to pass this off on something that Rob might do. Look, I think I'm sorry. Rob, I think like, we're losing, I trust we're losing Rob you. I think we're losing it. Oh, well, we lost him. Paul, why'd you cut? Oh, no, cut sorry, guys. It just uh, went down. Wow. Um, I've never seen the chat uh, respond so uh, quickly to that. I mean... I, yeah, uh, I, 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 I we're not endorsing that, it. It's a yeah, terrible idea. We don't idea. endorse that. Terrible idea. I was laughing at the insanity of that. That's that, that's, that's where we are. are. Where I am landing Paul, on it. When there are threw, some holes in this logic. I I believe it was a joke. Threw, I do believe it was a joke, right? I yeah, don't know yes. how he would make yes. money. Yes, it's yeah, definitely absolutely. a joke. Absolutely. There's no because by the way, every every COVID test you have to take. They require you a press, yes, and you have to yeah. show ID. It's a, yeah. I, I embrace only, the idea that he only was only in the last week have there been at home COVID tests that people got in the mail. That, but that's that, but that I but those say. tests don't for count for ed- real yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. for your um, own edification. I yes, even boys. my little thing right here. I have this. Yeah, uh, I think that reader. was. I think that was bullshit. Yeah, um, no, I, I think it was, but I appreciated him supporting. The premise I think he was dumb bit. I think yeah. he was adding, yeah, he was yes anding your bit. Yes. Uh yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So but the are. fucking chat, but what was interesting was the chat went crazy. Chat's still going crazy. Yeah. Uh all right. So let's move on to Jack. Yes, let's move on to Jack. Hello. Jack. Jack. This guy. Jack. This guy. Hey, buddy. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome, Jack. Uh, Jack is a fixture on our Discord. Jack has been to our uh, dinosaur he's, shows. He's trying um, to butter you up with the Clippers thing in the background. I know. He supported the Clippers. I appreciate that. They've got a big game tonight against the Lakers, who are probably going to come out swinging real hard because there's been so much negative press about the Lakers this week. Uh, and still, the Clippers are hobbled, but uh, doing better than the Lakers. Uh, so the Battle for LA continues tonight, 7 p.m., Pacific anyway. Jack, Jack, we know you. We love you. We know You've you're been not on the gonna, show. We know you're not gonna punk us with uh you know news of taking COVID tests for people. Um people are is- asking about Kawhi. I'm just gonna quickly answer that. Kawhi is still injured. Paul George is also injured. And uh finally, the person they just traded for Norm Powell, who came to the team, played about two games and then no. broke his foot. No one. So, was asking. Okay. I'm okay. reading the chat. Literally, no one was asking about the Clippers. Okay. Um, Jack, what is your idea for Baby Shark Tank? So, mine is kind of an app that me and my dad kind of thought of because we're both like really big film fans. So, we thought of like an app that would work like Shazam, but it uses AI to take like a screenshot of like a, like a frame from film 
and it would be able to tell you like who the actors are in the film in that shot. We tell you like where the filming location could be, or if it's like a video, it could show you the source of the background music. Okay, so a little bit like a more um, integrated into your phone version of what Amazon does. Like when Amazon, when you pause the screen on Amazon, they show you like a little bit of trivia or uh, they show you who the actors are in that scene at that time. I love this idea. And I also love like the idea of locations because I was watching a movie the other day and I was like, I think that's the same house from Get Out, but I couldn't find how to to figure that out. And I tried very hard. And so, uh, so, yeah. so this is an app that while you are watching the movie, you could point your camera at uh, the, the your TV screen potentially, and it would tell you if that's a location that's been used in other films. Is that what you mean? Or it could Everything. just show you the location in general. Because okay. I'm like a big person. like I like finding filming locations. Yeah. Here in LA, I love traveling to them. And I just kind of thought what if an app was able to tell that what is the best filming location that you would recommend to somebody in la visiting la great question ooh. paul ooh that's a hard one well what's 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 i'll tell spot? you one that i love i I'll pass it all the time yeah, yeah, yeah um go ahead uh the doc brown house from back yes. to the future pasadena it's, yeah, yeah it's pasadena a, it's, a, it's a half mile from where i am sitting right now and uh yeah doc brown's house and uh and also here in pasadena they shot the original halloween movie or a lot of the original halloween movie so you can see like uh like my daughter's little best friend who's five years old lives on the street where um there's like a big hedge a big bush and it's the one where mike myers like sticks his head out from behind the bush and then like disappears when jamie like jamie lee curtis is like looking for him um, Rob, I, the, hold on one second. I have uh, I have some breaking news. Molly, can you pull me in? Oh, we got breaking news, Jack. Stand by, Jack. This is about uh, World War Three. Oh, he's muted. All right, ready? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You were muted. Breaking news. James admitted that was a bit. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a bit. The previous uh, guest was joking with us about taking COVID tests for other people. Jack, you have not told us yet your favorite uh, film location. Where have you been where you've been like, wow, that's the place where they shot the thing? Um, Probably one of the first ones I've ever been to was, it was supposed to be Leonardo DiCaprio's house from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a and one. was it? You said it was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, well, I I don't know. Well, it was my parents. <laughs> your parents like, drove by there. <laughs> what? You I drove mean, by with what? your parents, and your That's parents. That's exactly said, what. Yeah, that looks like the house. I see. Have you ever been on like a studio tour, like the uh, Universal tour or the Warner Brothers tour? Or... Oh yeah, I go on the Universal tour actually a lot. <laughs> Are you a Universal Studios uh, yearly member, a SoCal yeah. member? Okay. Okay. Um, and so you've been, you've seen the Jaws uh, shark, you've seen the yeah. Psycho house, you've seen, um, you know, all of the cool locations yeah. there. Okay. And, um, but again, okay. I'm asking you, you said to me, I am a person who loves to visit these locations. We asked you, what's your favorite? You said, ooh, that's hard. And you go, we passed something that we think was this. <laughs> that like, so your story there's a lot of, oh, might there's a be. Lot of places. It, was, it was it. It, it yeah, definitely it was, was it. it. I don't know why I suggested that it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of places in L.A., Paul, that look like movie locations, Paul. Of course, of it's course. True. But when we're asking someone who is volunteering that yeah. that is their their hobby, uh, yeah. we want to make sure that, that uh, you know, we want to get a good answer. All right, so. Um, I like this idea. I, what I would do, it's interesting because it would have to be kind of crowdsourced, right? Because it, like at a certain point, um, well, it could be it could be as simple as this. It could be just a QR code that you get. Um, you know, when you push like info on your mm -hmm. remote, you know, it could just be a QR yeah. code that pops up. You scan that and then you get all of the production information like, oh, they shot this in Vancouver. 
uh, on these dates and these are the locations and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, the, to me, I think what you want to do is just create an app that you type in the name. Like, forget this taking picture of the screen. I think because you're you're talking about thousands of hours of research that would need to be put into this app. I love the idea of it. The uh, reality of it seems difficult, but I think that there's a way that maybe crowdsource on the internet. There is a great guy. I'm going to look at this um, that I follow on Instagram. Uh, it is a place is called, I think called like locations past and present. And what he does is he, uh, positions himself in the same shot as a famous movie scene. And you get to see what it looks like. I'm off often curious about that. Like how, yeah. uh, how things have changed now, Jack, would you ever consider doing, because it sounds like you, you love, uh, Hollywood history and, and stuff like that. Would you ever do an un unauthorized Hollywood movie tour where you pick people up in a van that Paul and I rent for you and, you know, we'll put a, your face on the side of it and you drive around and you have to, you know, do some research and write, you know, a spiel that you give people like, and on your left, this is where we shot, you know, the Grinch with Jim Carrey and blah, 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 blah. You know, would you, is that, some, would you be a good tour guide? Um, I've been told that I would be so probably. Yeah. Okay. Can I, can I hear probably. like 30 seconds of an audition for that? Job? Yeah. We want, we want to see it. Oh. <laughs> and on your left, here is where they film. No, come on. <laughs> higher energy, Jack. Come higher on. Energy. I'm off. I'm off. I, I'm, gotta... I came here with my family. From yeah. Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Give it, give us some in. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So here we are in the glorious downtown Los Angeles fashion district. And if you see on your left, this is where they filmed the scene from Black Monday that only lasted 30 seconds. And on your right, here is where they filmed another scene from Black Monday that was only for 30 seconds. I have a question. Uh, yeah, um, I appreciate the Black Monday call. I have out. a question. Is Black yes. Monday still on or uh Black Monday I'm, is uh Black Monday is not on anymore. We were we oh, made I'm here with my family. I'm visiting in LA with my family and this this gentleman is giving a tour, but he's talking about a show that I, I just am not clear if it's on or not. Uh well, you know what? Uh you know, if you are subscribing to Showtime, um you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of great programming there, but no, Black Monday. Sorry, is who, not sorry sir. Who are you? Because I'm I paid this gentleman. Oh Hi, shit! I'm Rob Cordry. Oh shit! It's Rob Cordry. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. my gosh! All right, all right. I like this. I like this. Uh, I think there's something here. Uh, I like I think the app. I see think it. that I think that the app yep. is a good idea. I think that it requires a lot of research. And uh, I think it's, yeah, it's going to be a lot of, you'd need a lot, a big team um, to execute this. I think it's going to be too hard. I think it's going to be too hard, but I love the idea of it. I would say maybe partner with Amazon and, uh, and see if you could add something to it or like figure out a way that you could already use all this great stuff. What do people in the chat think? Is there any way to incorporate 30 sexy singles? They could be on the tour. Let's say it's both an app and a tour. Mm, Put okay. them on the tour. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Someone in the chat said, you guys are millionaires, Rob and Paul. Just invest. All right. Okay. So, I mean, how would we do that? Are we just going to give Jack a bag of money and say, go build an app? That I, I, yeah. I mean, because I like Jack, like, how are you going to get all this information? What is your plan? How are you going to execute it? You know, I haven't thought that far yet. <laughs> Well, all right. All right. This is tricky. This is a very, uh, you know what? I appreciate the idea, but I think the winner tonight, uh, Jack, get out of here. Or baby Shark Tank. Uh, baby Shark Tank. Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. No. <sighs> Again, right. we're, yeah. Let's, let's recap. First mm -hmm. of all, no women, zero women on the show. Well, hi. 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 Well, no, not not that no, zero women are on the help, show. Zero Molly. sharks. Okay. Zero sharks. Women need to well because women actually execute their ideas. <laughs> yeah, you know why? You know why women aren't on the show because they're out actually running businesses. Yeah, people. they they are figuring it out. Well, I am uh, I am desperately trying to figure out something right now. Uh, I just texted Carl Tart about it because 
um, because <laughs> there is such a funny Hollywood on location thing that he sent me a while ago. And I'm seeing if he will remember it. And I, I want to play it so bad. So if I was looking down at my phone for a second, I was just trying to Google that so quickly. Um, but there is a uh, uh, there's an amateur person on YouTube that gives Hollywood home tours. And it is one of my favorite things. Uh, truly uh, a great thing. But thank you all of our sharks. What, what do you think, Rob? What is well, your let's, favorite? Let's yeah. recap. Um, who was our first person? It was um, oh, our Buttonhead. first. Head. Okay, Buttonhead. Buttonhead. His idea, what what was his idea? To have like uh, reality shows, like you could be oh, a yeah, part yeah. of a reality yeah. show, but a lot of it seemed like he just wanted to kiss people. Girls, yeah. Girls, or, yeah. yeah. I, I think that you could do a escape room type situation where people go and they are either acting out sitcoms if you give them the script or they're participating in reality shows if you if you do the yes. challenges. I think I think there's a world where that could actually exist. Um, uh yeah, I like that. I do like I want to be do I want to be in that business? I'm not sure. Um our next second we one, had Aaron yeah, and who had the grabber, um the the long grabber um with different hands, like different handles and 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 things on it. It could be scissors, like could a be Swiss a light, army knife, could be a, like a flaccid big, flashlight. <laughs> a big giant Swiss army knife. Yes. Um I, I wasn't sure about how often I would use something from really far away. I do think your idea of the camera, like a, like a, like if I, if I wanted to, cause there's been a lot of times where I've been like, is there something in my attic right now? But I don't want to go right. in there. It's like, or I you hear like, like maybe a, uh, an animal yeah. up there. Yeah. I or, like that. I like that idea. Burglar, or, you know, is there a person living in my attic? Are my know? kids asleep? I want to put it around the door. I don't want to pop my head yeah. in there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. And that's sponsored by Jack Reacher. Of course, people are reminding us about that. Uh, <laughs> and someone, then... said, someone said sex whip on a stick. To be clear, I don't think uh, the sex whip on a stick, uh, I think you need to hold it by hand otherwise it'll fly well no what if you wanted to like if, if someone was coming into your bedroom you could you know get them without getting that close because my issue with the sex whip is it's 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 too much of a personal yes yeah, too short <laughs> so i think it does that one it does well we uh, could just we could just make it longer so that yeah okay right yeah. yes would, would you get the would you get the thwap um right. Uh, our friend James came up with the green thumb cinema reusing cinema spaces. We had a lot of different uh, incarnations of that, but that one seemed to be the most viable. I think that might be the most viable idea. We could either take over movie theaters as he mm. pitched or drive-ins as you pitched mm. or karaoke rooms um, and repurpose them for movies and weed. And I think that's a pretty good idea. I, I, I love this idea. I think it was a solid idea. I think that people, I mean, look, and I like the grabber hand too. I just did the grabber Wait, what hand. Was James, what was James' idea before we got into his COVID thing? That was his idea. The uh, the movie theater. Oh, that movie was his idea. idea. Yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah. finally, uh, an app that breaks down what's the music cue, where was the location, when were they shooting it, I pictures, think, facts. I, I, yeah. think, I think that's such an, an, a niche thing, niche thing. I, you know, I'm interested in that. I don't know how many people are interested in locations and music and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but uh, I, I want to say I, thank you to Buttonhead for uh, just giving out some, uh, uh, some subscriptions to people on the channel. A lot of people have been giving out subscriptions on the channel. That's so lovely. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. That's amazing. Uh, but look, Jack's app, great idea. Everyone would use it. But it's a lot of work, a lot of research. tremendous work. Yeah, and he research. doesn't, and and he doesn't seem to be that passionate about the thing. Oh, I didn't know that that was part of this. Is a we got to see passion? Person. Yeah, we got to see passion. Um, I you know the grabber is the most realistic. Uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's a stick that we just add certain things to. We just have to add a. I did. I did like Aaron's presentation i liked his shirt and i liked the ass painting uh i just aaron was great after, aaron was great yeah. it's just, but like aaron's oh, I mean, the these are all do. great people yeah yeah personally right, yeah. look yeah, i would hang out with all these people uh um, aaron's is the one that probably is the most easy to to manufacture and you can probably sell it right away i, think I do weed, believe that i think the weed thing is the biggest money maker i think the weed thing would be a huge hit i like what he said the alamo draft house where it would be like the something 
green thumb or you know or some of that maybe seth green, rogan or somebody comes up with like gets that yeah, yeah green yeah, cinemas yeah, yeah. i like that idea a lot um but i do and i think what i'm realizing is um why i like it being private is because you're hanging out with your dumb friends not yeah. everybody's dumb friends so yeah, you do yeah, get that yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so the karaoke room version of a movie theater with weed great and James was doing a bit. We appreciate the bit. So everyone give James a lot of love. He is not admitting anything. So what does this mean? Um, you know, we've been talking about this for a while now. Do we invest? Do we do we just send uh, Molly? What we should do is get James's Venmo, and Paul and I will just send him, you know, five hundred thousand dollars each. I, and I don't say know what, come I don't back know. in four weeks with a, a detailed business plan. Yeah, I mean, I would say come back. How much of the weeks. company do we get? I would say, oh, that's all. TBD. Yeah, we should ask, but um, I think we should, I mean, we have to have a controlling interest of it. And I, I think that in four weeks, he's got to have like several locations, you know? Oh yeah. He's got to get, yeah, he's got to get, I mean, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for him. Um, all right. So thank you, baby shark tanks. So that was baby shark tank. There it is. Baby okay. shark. Get ready for Rob and Paul react to stuff. <laughs> 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 the graphics we can never have too many graphics on this show i now that i have figured out how to do this i am <laughs> uh, i am gonna be making these every day yeah uh <laughs> and by the way discord a great chance for you to be a part of the show uh they only have to be they have to be an mp4 uh but we're open we're open for business oh, people, um, wait people can make graphics for the show yeah, they can make oh, little bumpers no. like this. I mean, why yeah. not at this point? Like, let's, let's, yeah. let's, you know. I mean, and also, you know, just to put this out there, it doesn't all have to be about me not shitting my pants. Of course uh, not. Of course oh, not. Can I, mean, I, can, I sh can I show you something really quick, Molly? Can you pull up that picture that I sent you? This is, uh, I'm asking her to do something on the fly here. But yeah. uh, I was in Telluride, Colorado, and I went into a store and I saw a product that I was going to buy. And, um, I wanted you to look at this product, Paul. This was a, uh, I saw shirts, stickers, mugs. Who does this remind you of? I was going to say, is that a uh, Colorado version of Jason Manzukis? I mean, I feel like someone in Colorado took a picture of Zooks and said, let's make some t-shirts. Uh, I mean, this is... That is, uh, look, I've been to Telluride, Colorado with you uh, numerous times in our life. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people there. That person is not synonymous with Telluride at all. That is Jason Manzoukas. I mean, that is him, right? Yes. Someone, I sent it to Zooks and I said, I think somebody is making t-shirts with your face on it. That is a wild, that is a, yeah. I mean, did you buy it? I didn't, I did not buy it. No, my right. daughter was terrified by it. My daughter said, <laughs> I, I was going to get one for my daughter. And she said, no, get it off. Get it off of me. Um, All right. So Rob, we are react. getting, let's react to something. All right. One reaction. And we're bringing our guests uh, as yeah. they're popping in. I think they're, they're oh, popping great. in now. I think they're okay, popping great. in. Okay. Great. Great. All right. So show us what we got, Molly. What do we have? Baby secret. Can you keep a secret? Then listen to Mattel's new baby secret. If anyone else awake. She whispers just to you, and her lips really move when she talks. It's almost unbelievable. I want to tell you something. Baby secret tells lots of secrets, so you never know what she'll say next. Hold me close and whisper. And she looks so real, the way her lips move like yours. She can even pose the way you want. Don't talk so loud. Get Mattel's soft and wonderful new baby secret. So you can have fun keeping secrets together. What kind? If we told, they wouldn't be secrets anymore. I know a secret to you. <laughs> That's I real. Not, I did not like that. I did <laughs> not like it at all. Okay. First of all, my issue with baby secret is this, uh, uh, simply 
that Baby Secret only talks about having secrets and wanting to talk softer to tell secrets. Like it's it's like uh, those contestants on The Bachelor that when they finally have a date, they only talk about why they're on The Bachelor. They don't talk about themselves <laughs> at all. Like like Baby Secret, like give me some juice, give me some goss. Like this, Baby Secret is talking about the idea that, but what a terrible I also thing. I also frankly think that baby secret has a lot of terrible secrets <laughs> like terrible especially in the 50s what you know children are telling baby secret what, yeah what, what baby secret has seen oh. oh and when they zoom in on baby secrets mouth like that who the fuck directed that commercial <laughs> Not these that. next guys. Oh, oh wow. Good. Wait, hold on. Let me finish up that segment. Then that was Rob and Paul react to stuff. Pretty solid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, we need 10 times more graphics. I'm trying to I'm trying to do it. Uh we talked about these guests uh earlier in the show, but uh they are amazing writers, directors, producers. Uh they currently have a hit show on Apple TV. Uh, oh, Apple TV Paul, Plus. Can I say this? No. Can I say this? Yeah. Uh, I have not watched the show yet that they are here to talk about. So yeah, don't not. don't mention that when they come on. I'm gonna act well, like uh, you know. You know I've that just, we're on I, now, though. Yeah, but you I've been away. Okay. I was on a trip with my family, and I just, the show it. just came out a little while ago, and it's I haven't like had seven a weeks chance ago. to watch it. Okay, but. Tonight is I'm, the penultimate episode. You would want to. But, uh, but, 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 but I'm going to act like I've seen the after okay. party and I'm going to like laugh along and, and I'll participate. Well, well, I mean, if they call but, you out but, on it, I'm but not going to No, but please don't, please don't, uh, don't call me out. Please don't. Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. That, that, I didn't mean to play that one. I was going to say, please welcome our next guest who uh, are nominated uh, also for an Academy Award for the uh, one of the great uh, animated films of this year, uh, Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Uh, it's uh, fantastic. If you've not seen that, it's great. I've seen uh, it, yes. Please welcome Phil Lord and Chris Miller. <laughs> Bam! Hello. Look at that. <laughs> wow. What's happening? That's a good graphic. Wow. Did you see hey, those yeah. graphics? Oh, nice. man. Good. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. <laughs> they don't do wow. that. On fucking Colbert or Kimmel. No, you know? they don't. No, we are making this is this is where it's happening, where we have graphics for people, we have it all ready to go. This is a very uh, professional operation. You guys oh, are prepared. Bro. You guys have watched all the episodes of the oh, after no. party. Oh, yes. ready to do this oh thing. my no, god. No, no, no. Guys, before we even start, I want to tell you, like, I love the don't show. I love oh, it. Oh man. I watch no, Apple TV. Down. Why would you double Fucking down on this? all the time? And oh, Apple TV, which Apple which TV was Plus. your favorite episode of the after party? Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all great. They're <sighs> all. The Who's your favorite they're character, all... Rob? Oh, um, uh, Ben Schwartz. It, you know, okay, yeah, he's in the show. He is in the show. Yeah. 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 Um, and, but it is great i love it i've just been oh bro I, i'm excited because the finale is is tonight is no right? uh, next week uh, but, uh, next week next week that's what i meant that's what i meant. right it feels well, like tonight it's it going feels like so tonight fast. that's the problem is i've been traveling and so it feels like mm. tonight anyway this is, how, yeah this how is are really you awkward. guys how are you guys? doing great we're good <laughs> uh we're so excited to have you the show is great uh you know i have i have watched all the episodes i'm excited for tonight's episode i have apple tv plus uh and that's not to brag it's cheap uh, it's very inexpensive uh, if you're gonna get a one of these things it's like yeah. less than five bucks not yes. not like the the showtime app which is more expensive than netflix uh, i don't understand why uh unless you want to go back and really watch both seasons of the tutors but is, that true? Uh, <laughs> is showtime more expensive than netflix that, the bane of our existence was that you would tell people to get the showtime app and they'd be like well it's it's like 17.99 <laughs> a month but yeah. the tutors is an expensive show it, yeah, it is all it so is. it's in fairness and they're still paying that off so yeah. uh, we gotta help them out um we we have so much to talk about with you. We don't want to waste uh, most. Of, we don't want to waste too much of your time. Also, because uh, there's a big game coming up tonight. Uh, tonight with the Lakers and the Clippers, and I just want to like I, we are all fans. And you guys are. I, I don't watch basketball, but you guys are all Lakers fans. Is that right? I, I don't even oh, I don't really. Know. I don't know how it goes. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Rob. This is really two, two times in a row, Rob. I live in Los Angeles, so I just root for the Lakers. <laughs> oh, man. This is terrible. I, uh, yeah. You know, look, we got we got big game, uh, Battle of L.A., and we, you know, I mean, it's, it could go either way tonight. I think uh, we were, uh, we were, you know, talking about this earlier that uh, the Lakers could come out very angry uh, tonight because there's a lot of negative press about the Lakers this week. So I feel like we, we could, we could be, uh, we could be victim to that. I don't know. I'm yeah, wondering. they respond really well to to like public. <laughs> you know, as a team, they usually come together. Yeah, they really they they don't let any behind the scenes drama come out on the court. Uh, That's no just billboard material, you know. <laughs> Um, the rest is going right. to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they're really going to gel together uh, now that AD is not in the picture. I think that's that's probably what is what's going to happen. Mm, is everyone's yeah. going to rise to the occasion? Do uh, it for him. Yeah, Malik Monk, fifty-five points. That's what I'm going to guarantee tonight. Uh, he's going to come alive. The Clippers uh, are going to put a baby secret in their locker room, just going to whisper <laughs> a bunch of <laughs> shit about all the players. Dude, baby, stir secret. up some stuff. Oh, I, baby secret was upsetting that ba- I wasn't ready for that. I, uh, baby secret is one of those things where you see a, a, a real commercial and you're like, that should have been written. Cause it's so well done. And I will say, I haven't felt like that in a long time, except when I saw your, uh, Hall and Oates documentary oh, movie look at in the after party. Back to the after party. Oh, good. This guy. King of the Segway, a regular so many, King, you know. <laughs> I'm super curious <laughs> Rob's take on that thing. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, you know. You know where I stand on all that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 um, yeah. You don't that, even have to say. Yes. The uh, Hollow Notes biopic, Private Eyes. Which, yes. to me, felt like the probably, I mean, the show is so great and every episode you get to change. I think it it feels like there's a, there's genre shifts. We get to play more stuff. Like, uh, was it last week? Was an animated episode? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, people, did we even set this up? Do people do people know that you guys are the the guys behind the after party, which is a huge show? Uh, I feel like most people that are watching this have seen the show. Um, but uh, I'll even throw this right. up on screen. But look at boom! Look at yeah. there it is. Yeah. Look at this cast. Yeah. Look at this cast. They're amazing. Yes. Uh, yes. But that player. that that a chance to shoot that much of the Hall and Oates doc was that. I mean, it like, was irresponsible <laughs> as producers. <laughs> we had, uh, we, we did shot. a we did like four hours of, <laughs> of shooting for what is what five second. <laughs> we shot enough to make a first act of a movie, pretty much. Uh, we're out of the way there, movies. really. That's why, like, you want like I miss DVDs and Blu-rays because you want that. Like that extra features. Like you feel like back in the day, you would get a DVD and be like, "Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna give you the fifteen, the full fifteen minutes that we only that we shot of it." That irresponsible is... cut. <laughs> but also, I would imagine because the show goes over the same events through different people's eyes, like in a Rashomon style, it was also probably just great to get out of that those environments that you guys are in. <laughs> right. You know, it'd be like, "Yeah, let's spend some time here." And tonight, that's also part of it, right? Is tonight the backstory for Tiffany's character, or at least I just only saw stills. So I didn't know. It is. uh, Yeah. It is a Tiffany Haddish who plays uh, detective Danner. It's her backstory. And you'll learn, uh, you learn why she's uh, so passionate about solving the case. And there's some other clues that are relevant to the, to the present day murder. And there is a nested mystery. That's right. This episode is itself a puzzle to fix. And exactly. Fred Savage is in tonight's episode. Fred Savage, Jimmy Tatro, uh, Barbie Ferreira, and Reed Scott all are all in this episode. And they're wonderful, delightful humans. Well, we thought that because you guys are doing a, a murder mystery show, and I think anyone who is watching this show uh, is trying to figure it out. And uh, and I, I'm like, oh, I don't know. And I've gone back and forth. I tried to I, the game the system right out of the first episode, but I've changed my mind a bunch of times. We wanted to see how good your detective skills would be just by judging a book by its cover because oh, we've done is this. So definitely do that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what we have done here is uh, we have taken um, we have taken some screen grabs from the great show uh, uh, Murder She Wrote, and we're mm-hmm. going to show you some uh, some of the classic guest stars from Murder She Wrote, and you have to guess just based on what they look like in the show. Are they murderers 
or are they innocent victims? You know, are they, they are like, do you, we know the answers, but we just want you to go with your gut. Cause I think that's All what right. people are doing right here. You know, we, we don't know who did the murder, uh, but we're, tr we're trying to guess it. So. Victim or murderer. George Victim Clooney. Murderer. Yeah, no, George Clooney. Right anyone the except for with those eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's murdering what you mean. me right now. I know what you mean. I <laughs> think I know killer. what you mean. George Clooney was, uh, was a red herring. He was not guilty. Not, not guilty at all. Not guilty, guys. All right. Not his lips are so red. <laughs> uh, a star cross. His lips, his lips are really red. <laughs> this really is a uh, Facts of Life era Clooney, which is yeah. awesome. Uh, and Clooney. Brian Cranston. Oh, yeah. Oh, he Good. he did it. That guy. Killer. That guy. I'm going to guess killer for all of them. Definitely that. guilty. Right. Guilty. Guilty. Here's what I'll say about Brian Cranston. On the show, three times as three different characters Amazing. in the run of Murder, She Wrote. How and old is this, he in this? Like, he's got to be like, I mean, that's... He's, what if he's 17 and he just looks Yeah, like he really is. Old. He's like when 17. He comes, he comes back and goes like, isn't it weird that I was a different character? <laughs> and a different person? Like, no, no, it's fine. By the way, I don't know if you recognize who this is. That's Linda Hamilton. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, right, what's what? Pick? I'd recognize that feathered... <laughs> And we Thanks know she's anywhere. a stone cold killer of yeah. Roman. Yeah, is a killer. So uh, all three times he was an innocent victim, and in this one he leaves the scene, gets into a car, and it blows up. I could not find that clip, but oh my. he Whoa. is not guilty. All right, wow. does he play triplets? <laughs> <laughs> they all. I hope. I hope he kept his. Birth? I hope he kept his wardrobe. I fucking like that mm, jacket. Yeah, That's that is uh, a Nike track jacket. Nike. We, we had uh, Xander Berkeley on the show, amazing character actor. He was uh, the guy that the T2 stabbed through the mouth in, uh, in Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, sure. And he was on the A-Team twice, and he told a story on here that as uh, Mr. T was arresting him and putting the cuffs on him, he's like, hey, didn't we arrest you last season? <laughs> <He's> like, <"Yeah." laughs> That's, That's back when they did the A team live. <laughs> yeah. That must have been really yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, we can't all, right. This note. Uh, all right. So, uh, this one, Kate Mulgrew. Uh, mm. uh, so yes. many great roles that Kate Mulgrew has had from Captain she Janeway. She was on your show, Paul, wasn't Orange she is she the on New Black, and TSF. She was indeed. I mean, uh, she's dressed like a murderer. Here. I'm really yeah. torn yeah. because like, she's dressed like a high status, like fancy pants person who's obviously the murderer, but it was also the 80s. And like that, our heroes were all fancy pants, like yes, people, right? We like <laughs> yeah. trusted them, right? <laughs> Everyone wore a dead otter around their neck, and, uh, and we were like, "Let's around. lose, let's not have government, so that these rich heroes can fix everything." <laughs> I think it, you know, maybe it's the the John Cleese lookalike behind her that did. Yeah, it. he looks um, very innocent over there. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say murderer because because murderer. like look murderer. at the, look at the, right uh, the you're right, you know, guilty, he's a murderer, big murderer. All right, uh, next one we got here, Jessica Walter. Uh, wow. You know, from oh, development, wow. yeah. Uh, murder or not murder? Man, murder she wrote was really fucking casting some I top tell you notch what they had talent. Yeah, great casting director there. And they had a blanket deal with SAG. They just got they would like roll a wheel. <laughs> yeah. If your number came up, that was it. You had to do it. I'm I do not, think, not yeah. guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. All right. I'm gonna see. Oh, oh, sorry, oh. sorry. I didn't let you guess, Phil. That's okay. But, that's okay. I was gonna go against my partner, but you you saved me from doing that. <laughs> Um, all right. Oh, oh wow. are you being serious with me right now? <laughs> um Courtney Cox. Is this before <laughs> is this Courtney Cox before the Bruce Springsteen? I was gonna ask is this music video, post music video? Yeah. Uh it Maybe looks post. it looks I pre. So. I feel like it you looks pre? pre young. I mean, she looks so young here. I the sparkle and maybe yeah. that music video is what catapulted her to stardom. I think so. Oh, maybe you're right. Okay, maybe you're right. Yeah. Um, I say if she's a bride, she's a killer. Yeah. I say yeah. bride innocent. All right. Well, the answer is not guilty. Uh, she was actually uh, related to Jessica Fletcher. I think that she was her niece. Oh, so she also she has a lot of nieces over the many seasons. <laughs> sure does. And Jessica, I... you've got to help me. <laughs> uh, her sister had 50 kids. <laughs> Just a, any chance to get some young kids on the show. Uh, Rue McClanahan. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm starting to be upset that I was never on Murder, She Wrote. Like, yeah. <laughs> the casting is amazing. It's, it's like, uh, might have been. This Rue looks McClanahan. like she's a murderer to me. I, I, I'm, I'm going guilty. Guilty. 
Guilty. Gotta and the be. answer is gotta be guilty. Not oh, guilty. Oh, oh, what? This is the definite not, guilty not one. Who who did All she right. play, Paul? Uh, I don't know this one. This is a sexy, uh, well, yeah. a very sexy librarian. Let's do one very more. One more. We'll, we'll end on one more. Like Tom <laughs> Bob. No, oh, uh, we know he didn't kill anybody. He didn't kill yeah. anybody. He wouldn't kill a soul. He's Jessica's pal. Yeah, he's got to be Jessica's pal. And it, yeah, that's it. He is not guilty. All right. That oh. was, uh, uh, but you guys did pretty good. I think he did pretty good across the board. I mean, it was uh, uh, almost as good as flipping a coin. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think it will be possible for people have people guessed correctly uh, from what you've seen online like anyone yes i will say yeah or like uh, are, 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 yeah is, is twitter like is twitter honed in yet like are they uh, there uh, there's definitely a uh a reddit page that is like uh full of a lot of theories some of yeah. them uh are closer to being correct than others but yeah. they nothing gets by those guys there's like uh you know Every little detail is analyzed, uh, and sometimes and, wrongly, right? Because I remember I used I used to be on like Lost, like before there was like Reddit, like Lost message boards, and I was like, well, this means this, and three toes on the statue mean that that's actually this, and like so there must be fun in looking at wildly inaccurate theories it, based it on is, like the books on the wall were this. Yes, exactly, because there are a lot of hidden codes and ciphers throughout the the show, so they they spot. Uh, almost all of them and just can you so, show and, us like can you tell us one of them or is there one that you can reveal or like sure i could okay. say like they're in the first episode in the background there's a flashing red light in one scene and it's a morse code message that says something uh Whoa, and it's stuff like what? that um and so there's like little hidden messages it says inside. rob <laughs> uh, <laughs> did you it's get my me? email it's for me. i got it oh my god you can't uh, miss you yeah. Um, and, uh, oh, so I love because that. of that, then everyone is just looking for like, well, this stack of books must have a, a hidden message. Right. If they take all the letters and rearrange them, it spells this, and uh, and uh, some of it is a lot of wish casting. But it all yeah. they're they're pretty clever over there. I I was really interested because I feel like it's so hard to keep a secret because that great that that brain trust of the internet will just it like it kind of um, devalues the individual's thinking because like if we all just were watching it casually, oh, we, we find out, but because people make it their their mission to figure it out, it's like it, uh, you know, it, it can kind of be like, oh, wait, they got, they got it this early. Like when do you feel like people started to get close? Was it at least like, you know, three episodes or, I mean, I guess the first three episodes all launched at the same time, but like when do you feel like people started to get hot? Right out of the well, gate or did you have a little bit of time? Um, well, it's hard to say because, uh, you know, there were like a bunch of uh, theories going on. And yes. so some people were warm early on and some okay. people uh, were. But it's a it's a fair play mystery, which means it's a character you have seen on screen. It's not something that, that happened. Uh, and uh, so it's and you should be able to solve it from <laughs> all of the clues that are there. So all right. Because the, two, the crazy people who like analyze every frame, uh, a lot of them have like like honed in on uh, something pretty close. But for the casual viewer, they're kind of all over the map, which is exactly what we wanted. Isn't it I crazy it. that we live in a world where these online sleuths are trying to, like, couldn't they be solving real murders? <laughs> and, yeah. A lot of them are, and then are doxing the wrong people. And then, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But that's uh, why I think that, like, instead of courts, we should just put the accusations and whatever evidence right, on Reddit, just put it out there yes and put it out like, there. there's some pretty odd shaped shadows get. in that beanbag in the back of the picture i <laughs> you, think the body's yeah. in there you do you do um the closing arguments from the defense and the prosecution and then you go to reddit now <laughs> we also heard all the information this we, is we, jury. Got. we don't have to go in it saves everybody money and time i like this uh, and yeah. that could be a better version of jury duty i want to give you guys one thing before we let you go you have been behind some giantly beloved things. I mean, from Clone High, which is coming back to the Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, which people say is their favorite Spider-Man. And we know that there, you guys are back for the sequel. Obviously, the Lego movie, 21, 22 Jump Street. Uh, and now this... Last Man I, on Earth. Last Man I mean, on Earth, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. The list goes on and on. But... Eventually, it stops. 
<laughs> at a certain point yeah, it has yeah, to you, I mean, it, it has to definitely yes yeah it has yeah. to stop yeah i guess it just the list goes on and then it will stop <laughs> and, then, uh, and then just walk and on then it doesn't. but i guess the, the question i wanted to ask you was and we'll give you this opportunity we've done this on the show before is there one question that you want to say we're done we never want to answer this question again we're going to answer it here right now forever no one, forever and we will we will time. immortalize it we will package it up so if anyone ever has this question, they know where to look. Because I'll give you an example. Like when I did uh, the show, The League, uh, every literally you were great. every interview. You were great on the show. Paul. Thank you, you so much, great. Rob. Yeah. I, I really appreciate yeah. it. You were really fantastic great. on the show. We, we had some fun scenes. Uh, the, uh, the, the question that they always <laughs> asked was like, do you play fantasy football in real life? And that was, that was always the, the, the big question. And we, like, I feel like for you guys, there must be so many questions that you're just like and look it's not a bad question it's just a question you get all the time is there one question that you would love never to answer again <clears throat> there's well there's one on the after party in particular yes chris do you have the same guess as already, well, I feel like they, already every you guys are own, sick like, of question that you get a million times on that one it was sort of like did you go to your high school after party or high there, school there. It was <laughs> that one but the one that drove me the oh. most nuts was this cast is so great. Like, yes. how did you contain <laughs> them? Like, how did you ra wrangle them? How did you well, wrangle them? All been... the time and like <laughs> messing everything up, and you're like, what are you talking like they're about? Not children, <laughs> they're like professional. <laughs> yeah, they're not like animals <laughs> that you bring. People <laughs> just show up to just destroy a set. <laughs> they we must want, have been it wasn't improvising. <laughs> We yeah, so like, wanted them. We thought they were amazing. They're improvising and humorous jokes that they're adding. Did but they oh, ruin everything? How did you get them to say the words? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't understand how a, how a, a set works and how it, it they are not. They are not every different. interview. Like, yeah. and the interviews are like four minutes long, so it's like there's three questions. And right, that was yeah. one of them every yeah. time. Oh my gosh! And people would say, "I reject the premise," <laughs> <laughs> which I have wanted to say forever. Because <laughs> it is like it's like not that you found these people. I mean, first of all, not that you found them. They all are working actors who have been in multiple projects, <laughs> and, and most of them are also writers, producers, directors as well, and they know how <laughs> how, how to behave. And we yeah. were like excited when they had an idea idea that was different they were like great that's why we wanted you to do it and 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 i guess the question is then definitively did you both go to your high school reunion did you go <laughs> yes. and we did we did <laughs> and it was fine but who nobody got died murdered? who no oh, one no nobody one got died. murdered uh that part's the fictional part chris <laughs> phil it, thank you so much for spending some time with us chatting with us about the after party which is now on uh apple and tv I'm plus book man i've memorized the show um like oh. i do for all what's of your our favorite guests. line what's your yeah favorite what's your favorite line, favorite line? Yeah. oh yeah. when ike says uh uh let's go get some soda <laughs> i was like what oh no this is not <laughs> this I is not soda. good amazing oh yeah, boy this is a real yeah good. real yeah uh well again the after party tonight the penultimate episode you can still catch up before the finale next week you can make your own guesses don't go on reddit if you don't want to be well don't you can. You go can do it. on reddit yeah and then well, also of course uh and of course this was just teased to spider-man into across the spider-verse and uh and this year and this is the year it's coming out wow this is that's crazy year. We yeah. are alive in this year. <laughs> <laughs> All um, right. So uh, good, guys. Thank guys. Thanks for coming thank on. You so good to thank see you guys. guys. Thanks for having us, fun. guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Can I see mine real quick? Can yeah, I sure. Yours mine? is. Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. That was pretty good. Man. You really blew it. You really blew it. You really let them know that you did not. I mean, you doubled down. I think that so I, hard. I think that they think that I have seen it all. Because otherwise they would have been pissed. Well, you said my get me a soda. I don't remember that. That didn't even seem like a specific line. Thank God you thinking, said Ben Schwartz. I was I was thinking like what would Ike say? And I know that Ike likes soda, so I there had to be mm. something that they shot where he said, Let's go get some soda. Uh, well, I mean, all right, you know, Rob. I mean, I, we... The thing is, Paul, is that uh, you know, I've just been the past couple months has been, I've been very busy and I am going to like, honestly, I'm excited because I do 
I think those guys are great, and I do love the sh the idea of the show. I'm gonna watch. Watch it, it for the watch it. I'm gonna watch it tonight. I love everyone your in the peers. show. You have you are friendly with the people. show. Yes, I'm gonna watch it tonight. But I didn't want to tell them that I hadn't seen it because I didn't want to piss them off. I get that. Um, and I think on if I'm being totally honest, I thought I did a good job of of lying. I don't, I'm not positive about that. Uh, I'm not positive about that, but what I am positive about is that the Lakers game uh, versus the Clippers starts in two minutes. Okay. So, Rob, is there any final thoughts? I, anything you no, want to say? Listen, you know, as far as like great shows, yeah, this is this is up there. You know, this Got is great up guess. there. Great guests, great convo with you, great catching up with you. Uh, I liked hearing about. Your wife being sick, your family Thank being you. sick, your dog being you sick. You liked hearing about that? Yeah, I loved it. I loved the part where you got your dog all fucked up on OxyContin. Mm. Um, I love the part where where people came on and pitched us ideas for businesses. And then we would say whether or not we were... Baby Shark Tank. I love that. Um, I loved, uh, the interview with Phil and Chris, you know, they're huge directors and writers and producers. producers. Yeah. And the, and the list goes on and then it stops. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you this much, Rob, next week, I am going to be in Syracuse, New York. Uh, what? I, oh I my am. gosh, it is so beautiful this time of year. What are you going there for? Uh, I am going there to, uh, shoot a movie called, uh, the binge Two, what? uh, written by, uh, our oh, friend the Jordan Van Dita. Yeah. The um, binge, the binge one is uh, a Hulu um, original. Yeah, that's um, great. And so I'm going up there to uh, shoot just just a quick little bit. Uh, yeah. But um, I'll be up there next Thursday. I don't know what my shooting schedule is. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll, let's we'll talk figure about, it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We could. But always, on Monday, I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Uh, I did this bit, and you're more than welcome to join in. But I uh, I do a, a thing called. Uh, uh, where I take people's uh, like a helpline. I kind of do like a, a Frasier call in show. That's going to be on Monday. So come check that out if you'd like. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so what else? Uh, yeah, that's it. Anything else you want to plug? Um, I want to say that, uh, you know, I hope that we all don't um, get killed in a war. Uh, uh, yes, our thoughts go out to everybody uh, in the yeah, Ukraine and people with relatives. Ukraine, and it's like, yeah, that's serious and terrible. And thinking about those people, yeah. And uh, and other than that, I I did want to just um, ask you to um, if we could talk about my opening thing. You know, we'll talk about oh. it later. But um, yeah, we don't, to, we don't have to play. We don't have to. All right, play that's it. been our Rob Hubel definitely doesn't shit his pants. Thank you, everybody, and good night. All right. If you like what you watched, make sure you subscribe, like, do all the things, tell your friends about it. And if you want to watch the show live, you can every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash friendzone.